All right, one of the little pitfalls that I tend to you know, fall into when I'm doing systems by elimination is when the problem is set up to be what you would consider a subtraction style problem. Sometimes I lose uh, the information that I need because I'm very visual. I tend to see things as they are and I forget occasionally that I have to adjust if I'm going to subtract. For instance, in this problem, if I did negative 10 minus negative 10, they actually do cancel out. But then I'd have to do 5 minus negative 6 and 5 minus 14, or sorry, 5 minus 6 and 5 minus 14. Um, the problem with that is it's not what's there on the page already, and I'm not very good at adjusting to it. So what I'm going to do instead of starting to do that is change it into an addition problem by multiplying everything by negative 1 in one of the two equations. And it really doesn't matter which one you choose, negative 1. So negative 1 times 6 is negative 6x. This is supposed to be negative 1. It goes there. Uh, negative 1 times negative 10 gives you plus 10y. And negative 1 times 14 is negative 14. Everything else on the top stays the same because I didn't do anything there. And although I'm going to end up with the same answer, to me, visually, this shows that the, tens can't, the y values cancel out. And then I can just use what signs are there. I mean, technically, at this point, I'm doing addition. But visually speaking, it makes more, it's more appealing to me because I can see it's 5 minus 6, even though it's really 5 plus negative 6. It just makes more sense in my mind to do it this way. It may not be the easiest thing for you to do, but that's fine. You don't have to use this. Um, and now once we get that 9, we can plug it back in wherever we want. As a quick aside, I should say that one of the biggest mistakes that I see uh, during the day is people who plug the variable into the wrong place. So if you're going to do the work, make sure you write down the variable name too and plug it into the right spot because it's really easy to sort of lose your place in the whole thing and then not know what to do with it. She's in substitution, and I find out the y value is 4. So that means if I were to put out these two linear equations or lines or whatever you'd refer to them as, sets of data, they would have a point that they actually have in common, or the lines would intersect at 9, at an x value of 9 and a y value of 4. So at that coordinate on the old graph, that's where they should uh, intersect. So look at the next one. Let me clear this out. Same type of thing here. I'm not actually going to go through the whole thing. But in this case, I have 2 and, or 2x and 2x. I have to make, visually, I need to see that they're different. That's just my personal need. So I'm going to multiply every, one of these by negative 1. And even you could even do the top if you wanted to. So if I wanted to do the top by negative 1, I'd end up with negative 2x minus 9y equals 9. And then on the bottom, I'd leave it the same. Now I see that these can cancel out, and I can just work it out from there. But that's what I need to do, even though, theoretically, I could go ahead and solve it right now using subtraction. I just have to remember it's 2 minus 2 and 9 minus 2 and negative 9 minus negative 16. I'd rather not do that. It's a personal choice. Um, let's look at two more that you would have to use this type of, that you could use this type of thinking with to make it easier. Um, as you can see, the x's are the ones that you probably work with here. Although I guess you could multiply the top one by 10, and then they would cancel. But to me, 3 times 3 is 9, so that's what I'm always going to think about. I also have to think that, well, I want to have signs that are opposite. So instead of just multiplying by 3, I'm going to multiply by negative 3. So negative 3 times negative 3x is positive 9x. This gives me plus 3y and then plus, or equals, sorry, 3. Now, visually, it's appealing, because I can know that that's going to be canceled out. I can deal with this issue. y is equal to 1. It's easy to plug that one back into this equation. So I can say that when I have these two lines, 
they will intersect at point zero, one. You know, no big deal. I'm going to check to see if it's right. It is. Okay, and the last one, I'd, I'm going to talk about one more, I think. This one. Uh, this is one where we're going to have to multiply the top and the bottom. And once again, you could totally do it as a subtraction. I'm going to do the 7 and the 4, for instance. Because um, I know that 7 times 4 is 28, and I know that 4 times 7 is 28. Now, if I wanted to just multiply them by those numbers, which I'm, you know, welcome to do, This would leave me with a situation in which I would end up with negative 28y over negative 28y. And visually, like I said, that's not appealing to me. And all I have to do to fix it is just multiply one of them by a negative. So you end up with 24x plus 28y minus 60 over negative 49x minus 28y equals uh, 210. And this is supposed to be a 60. It was just a very ugly version. Now, visually, it's appealing to me because I can cancel those out. And then you go on and solve it the regular way. But it's just a personal preference. You can decide if it's for you or not, but there it is.